Are there any familiar faces in the photo? New Sheffield, remodeled and renovated, has now become the Aliquippa Elementary School. The first graduating class from Woodlawn was in 1913 and had six members. This class attended most of its classes in Beaver until its senior year when it attended class and graduated from Lockstone School. The first high school building in Woodlawn was built in 1913 and was located at the foot of the Plan 12 Hill on Main Street just above Franklin Avenue. This class photo was taken in 1950. May 14, 1919, the entire student body of Woodlawn High School assembled outside for their annual photo. Many of you will recognize the building in the background as the Franklin School Building. It was built in 1913, sold in 1982, and demolished several years later. It was given this name in 1925 with the opening of the new Harding High School. The name Harding was chosen for the high school as a tribute to President Warren G. Harding, who died in office in 1923. This is one of the classes at Harding High in 1926. This photo features the senior members of the Harding High Orchestra in 1926. On December 20th, 1930, Harding High School was renamed Aliquippa High School. This was done as a result of the merger between Aliquippa and Woodlawn in 1928. The high school was one of the finest in the country, featuring a progressive education curriculum that was instituted by Superintendent H.R. Vanderslice. This was an orange crate or hands-on educational method that has some of the features of the Montessori system today. The carpentry class of 1942 is an example of technical training. Cultural enrichment was stressed in all phases of the educational process. The Paul Choir afforded all students with musical talents an opportunity to enjoy, enrich, and display those talents. The spring musical became an annual tradition at the high school. Featured here is the 1939 cast of the Gilbert and Sullivan musical, The Mikado. Another proud tradition of Ellicopa High School is the band. Since its founding in 1926, under the guidance of Mr. A.D. Davenport, the band has provided musical enrichment opportunities for the students. The 1933 orchestra is featured in these photos. Where would school spirit and enthusiasm be without cheerleaders? Do you recognize anyone in these pictures taken in 1940 and 1949? A marching band had to have a color guard. This shot features a color guard member from the 1940s. Who could ever forget the selection of the May Queen and her court? This was always a very special event to look forward to. Another spring event eagerly anticipated was the prom. A tradition at Aliquippa was to hold a prom in the gymnasium, which was always splendidly decorated for the occasion. The Aliquippa schools were a reflection of the proud community which created and supported them. The diverse ethnic makeup of our community gave the public schools their unique character and an international flavor. The purpose of the school district was to educate its students, focus their careers, and develop in them a sense of pride for their community, their state, and a total responsibility to their American citizenship. The cooperative spirit that existed between Jones and Laughlin and the community was very apparent in the many community activities that were held. An annual event that was eagerly anticipated by all was the Labor Day Parade. Each department in the plant was represented by a float or marching contingent. Oftentimes, awards were given for creative entries in the parade. Heading up this parade in the mid-1930s was the tin plate department. Their float featured the well-known tin floppers. And closely behind are the tin floppers in person, dressed in their work uniforms. Other departmental representatives were the Blooming Mill, which was a prize winner, the General Labor Department, and the North Mills Mechanical Department. Throughout, you should notice the crowds that are three and four deep 
along Franklin Avenue. One of the community entrants in the parade was the Rotary Club float. In 1959, the United Steelworkers sponsored the first annual USWA Labor Day Parade. The parade featured the banner carriers on horseback, followed closely by the Aliquippa High Marching Band. Again, notice the crowds and those familiar landmarks in the background. One of the highlights of the day was a performance by the Croatian Jadran Junior Tamboritsans. The summer of 1958 is one that many of us remember well. It was the 50th anniversary of the founding of Aliquippa, our golden jubilee. Of course, there was a parade that featured many floats and marching bands, and additionally, the week-long celebration held many other special events. One of the many features was the Brothers of the Brush that required adult males to either pay a tariff to go clean-shaven or sport a mustache or beard. These patrons of Bullets Bar and Grill in Lockstown proudly display their mustaches. Many residents added their own flair to the week's activities by dressing in jubilee attire. A prize winner in the best beard contest poses for this shot on Oliver Street in the Bricks. To honor and preserve this event, a commemorative plate was issued. The rim of the plate featured a sketch of each of those things that made the first 50 years possible. An ethnic tradition that originated in the Italian community, but was enjoyed and celebrated by all, was the San Rocco Day celebration. This festivity was held to commemorate the patron saint of Patrica, the small Italian community from where many of the residents of Aliquippa emigrated. The traditional parade would start after the church service at St. Titus, go to the Italian club, and proceed through the Plan 11 community. The MPI band led the parade as shown in this 1926 photo taken at the corner of 5th Avenue and Jefferson Street in the Plan 11 section. A tradition along the parade route was for the members of the community to pin money to the St. Rocco banner and be rewarded with a traditional Italian pastry, the Cimelli. Another of our many ethnic traditions was carried out in West Aliquippa. The St. Anthony Festa, held annually in West Aliquippa, featured a parade from the SOI Club to St. Joseph's Church, with the male members of the congregation carrying the statue of St. Anthony. This tradition had a peculiar beginning in that the statue of St. Anthony ordered by the St. Joseph's Church was mistakenly delivered to the SOI club. The men of the SOI club found it necessary to carry the statue from the club to the church this first time, thus the beginning of a tradition. These early slides feature members of the congregation in front of St. Joseph's Church surrounding the statue of St. Anthony. The Carl Diatri Band provided musical entertainment for the St. Anthony Festa. These young men were dressed in their traditional religious habits for the St. Anthony Parade. Plan 11 was also the site of a variety of ethnic events. One of the many was the annual Elks Parade, which featured the local Elks Club members, marching bands, and majorettes. This parade photo was taken at the base of Fifth Avenue at Sheffield Avenue. The people of Aliquippa were treated to another parade on June 30, 1954 for the dedication of the new Aliquippa Community Park. This facility was the result of the combined efforts of the community, Local 1211, and JNL. Located on Maratta Road in Plan 12, the park was the site of activities and entertainment all day, culminating in a Little League baseball game and a concert by the MPI band. The groundbreaking ceremonies for Morrell Park, another recreational complex in the community, is featured here. Special events often feature personalities that you might not expect to see in Aliquippa. 
Was Ed Sullivan recruiting our safety patrol to be his next act on the Ed Sullivan Show? Bishop John J. Wright of the Pittsburgh Diocese poses here with a few members of the Alacoque Fire Department. Bishop Wright was later named Cardinal and was the first American Cardinal to sit at the Vatican. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Porky Chedwick paid a visit to the Quippian Club. Aliquippa was also represented in Hollywood. John Hodiak, who spent his formative years in Aliquippa, starred in many Hollywood films, but his best-known movie was Lifeboat, in which he starred with Tallulah Bankhead. John was married to actress Ann Baxter. His tragic death at the age of 41 cut short a very promising movie career. This photo from 1914 featured John and his family. One of West Aliquippa's favorite sons was honored with a parade in 1961. Henry Mancini, accompanied by his wife Ginny and son Christopher, came to Aliquippa for Mr. Lucky Days. Mr. Mancini's talents were obvious in his early years when he played in the Aliquippa High School Band and with many of the local groups, including the SOI Band. The celebration included a concert featuring local musicians directed by Mr. Mancini. These photos show him rehearsing the musicians for that concert. His many achievements include four Academy Awards, one for the sentimental favorite, Moon River. During the course of his illustrious career, he was nominated for 70 Grammys, winning 20 of those prestigious awards. Aliquippa has played host to many important political figures over the years. None were more important than John F. Kennedy. In 1962, the President of the United States paid a visit to Aliquippa. President Kennedy was campaigning for Pennsylvania Democratic candidates and is captured in this photo along with Governor Lawrence and Congressman Clark. A reviewing stand was set up along Sheffield Avenue in the parking lot of the Pittsburgh Mercantile Building. Thousands thronged to see the President and be part of the celebration. President Kennedy can be seen at the podium and also recognizable are the Aliquippa and Hopewell High School bands. Our community has always played a major role in times of international <coughs> conflict. Aliquippa was a key component to the war effort because of its steelmaking capability. Not only did we provide steel, but also some of the most dedicated soldiers in the nation. The war honor roll that once stood on Franklin Avenue paid tribute to over 4,000 men and women from our community that gave service to their country. The World War I doughboy that originally stood at the Aliquippa end of the Aliquippa Ambridge Bridge still stands at our present honor roll in Plan 12. Jones and Lachlan and its employees always took a proud stand in the defense of the United States. This ad was featured in the Pittsburgh newspapers on May 15, 1918, demonstrating their support. The Second World War called on many local families to send their sons and daughters to battle. One family, the Morsanis, had a son in each branch of the service during World War II. The war effort required volunteers from all walks of life. On April 27, 1942, the Aliquippa schools were closed and the teachers volunteered their time to register all men for the selective service. This registrant, George Zanayich, was 53 years old, married, and the father of five children. To conserve valuable resources for the war effort, a ration system was developed for all citizens. These war ration books are from World War II. Another historical event that greatly influenced life in Aliquippa was the establishment of labor unions in America. Aliquippa was known as a company town totally controlled by the management of JNL earning its nickname of Little Siberia. The workers of Aliquippa JNL plant paved the way for the right to unionize in America by their brave stand against the company in the spring of 1937. On May the 12th, pickets gathered at the tunnel to begin the strike that would guarantee them the right to vote to form a union. Support for the union was strong locally, but also involved important labor organizations from across the country. A massive gathering of union activists continued daily until JNL agreed to settle the strike. This celebration at the Y on May the 14th, 1937, signals the end of the strike when JNL agreed to allow a vote 
to decide on the formation of a union. Local 1211, still active today, is shown in caucus at contract negotiations in the 50s. Not all memorable events were pleasant occasions. In the spring of 1936, western Pennsylvania was devastated by dangerous flooding and Alapupa was not spared in this disaster. Pictured here is the rod and wire office at the overhead bridge, surrounded by floodwaters. Here we see the coal handling and docks department, also in the south mills, completely submerged by floodwaters. This picture shows that same area at normal water levels. These photos were taken from the banks of the flooded Ohio River in West Alapupa and feature Crow Island, entirely underwater. Many local businesses, as well as local residents, suffered much damage due to the unusual flooding. Another natural disaster to hit Alapupa was the snowstorm of 1950. Traffic on Franklin Avenue, usually bumper to bumper, was virtually non-existent during the storm. The Orpheum Bowling Alley on Franklin Avenue had major problems when the roof of their building collapsed under the weight of the snow. This good Samaritan was caught shoveling the area around the honor roll. As peaceful as the PNLE station appears here, the winter storm of November 1950 caused a multitude of problems for both local residents and businesses. The community of Woodlawn was a boom town in the true sense of the word. It can be compared in development to any small community that grew up in and around the oil industry or the gold and silver mines. In the days prior to coming to Jones and Lockton, the area that became Woodlawn was a small farming community nestled along Lockstown Run and the Ohio River. The roads linking Woodlawn to the other local communities were unpaved wagon trails such as the Phillipsburg Road that led from Woodlawn to Phillipsburg, now Manaka. Jenna realized from the beginning that a plan to expand their steelmaking operation to Woodlawn would be to vote. Not only would this involve the construction of a steel plant, but also the building of a community that would support a workforce that would immigrate to Woodlawn from all over the world. Development began in earnest with the early project being the construction of a culvert to contain and control Lockstown Run. The completion of this project allowed for the development of both Sheffield Avenue and Franklin Avenue as the business district of Woodlawn. In 1909, the Woodlawn Land Company began constructing homes in 12 different plants in the community. This is Plan 11. At the rate of one home per day, a planned community of 1,500 homes were completed by 1913. This photo shows Plant 11 extension. This view of Plant 7 shows some of the many gardens that people tend in town. All of the plants contain brick paved streets, and those more distance from the business district had an added convenience of streetcars. This trolley car is bound downtown on Hopewell Avenue in Lockstown. The plans were designed to build on the hills surrounding the business district, featured in the center of the photo, and were located not far from the mill. John L. expands, so did Alacupa. With growth into the New Sheffield area, the area between 20th Street and Broadhead Road slowly changed from sandlot baseball fields to homes and businesses. You are looking south from Broadhead Road towards Sheffield Road. Part of the growth of Alapupa featured automobiles and traffic, which was a real problem in one particular area of town. This aerial photo shows that area as it used to be. Where is this? To help with traffic congestion, on Route 51 overpass was built over the Y. Unfortunately, several buildings had to be removed to make way for highway improvement. As with cities, there were a need for many public services ranging from police, fire protection, to public recreation. Alacopa had a core crossing guards that assist the police force during peak pedestrian traffic hours. The police force was there to serve and protect the citizens of the community and was led by dedicated officers such as Mr. James Bell, Mr. Nino Colonna. The fire department was polished and professional 
in both manpower and equipment. The Plant 12 station probably displayed their fire ranges in 1939. Plant 12 swimming pool has provided many hours of entertainment and enjoyment for everyone in the community. This pool is still in use today. Franklin Avenue changed in appearance over the years with the addition of new buildings, the removal of streetcar tracks, and the brick streets. Though repaving with asphalt in addition to parking meters, none of these changes ever interrupt the hustles and bustles that was ever apparent in downtown Aliquippa. West Aliquippa, or the original Aliquippa, developed as an industrial community many years before Woodlawn assumed that role. Such turn-of-the-century businesses as the Russell Shovel Company, Balkan Crucible Steel Company, Kid Drawn Steel Company, and the Mutual Union Brewing Company provided employment for the residents of Aliquippa. Additionally, the p &E Railroad had constructed and operated an amusement park in Alabama. This was a thriving, independent community which boasted its own schools, churches, businesses, and fire department. While Woodlawn was struggling through those early years of development, Alabama was enjoying the prosperity of an established town. As neighboring Woodlawn continued an unbelievable growth trend, and Alabama began to decline. A merger of the two rival communities was imminent. Another significant event in the slowing of the economy of Aliquippa was the growth of the Pianelli Railroad Yards that was situated between Aliquippa and the highway to the west. As the railroad grew and it became increasingly difficult to enter and leave the town, Aliquippa was landlocked and had only one route in and out. This peculiar fact resulted in Aliquippa being registered in Ripley's, believe it or not, as the only place in America with only one way in and one way out. On January 31, 1928, the merger of Woodlawn and Aliquippa was made official. West Aliquippa was a proud community and that fact was always evident in the appearance and professionalism of their fire department, which was founded in 1904. In the early years, they were renowned for their award-winning performances in parades throughout Western Pennsylvania. In 1914, they were the first prize winners for hand-drawn ladder trucks in a Connellsville, Pennsylvania parade. In 1931, the fire department featured Queen Aliquippa with her braves in another parade. Another well-remembered piece of West Aliquippa history is Crow Island. It is somewhat difficult to see here but the area along the river and to the left of Washington School is Crow Island. The island was owned by J&L and they permitted local residents to use the property for vegetable gardens. At times, there were houseboats locked in the back channel of the river near the island. A very significant event in the history of West Alapopo was the construction of the vehicular tunnel beneath the Pian Alley railroad tracks. The tunnel permitted easy access to West Alapopo from Route 51. If you were approaching from Aliquippa on a Monday, you might remember seeing this site as you pass Longstown with the wash hanging out. North Beaver Avenue section of West Aliquippa, where I was born, is shown in the upper right portion of this slide. As you passed the Pianelli Station, you were at the entranceway to the tunnel. If you were standing on 3rd Street looking into the tunnel, you would have seen the Pianelli Freight Station a very busy rail yard and in the distant background tank road and the city water storage tanks. As you emerge from the tunnel into West Alapupa, you would have seen the familiar Como building before turning onto 3rd Street. West Alapupa has a very proud heritage and is a community steeped in rich traditions and ethnic customs, far more than can be captured here. See how many landmarks you can locate. There's the Balkan, Washington School, the Columbia Hotel, the Swimming Pool, Precision Kid, the Fire Station, and St. Joe Church, to name just a few. During Aliquippa's heyday, there wasn't anything you couldn't buy downtown. Imagine a Harley Davidson dealership. That's right, we had one on Station Street, and for fun on the weekends, the Harley owners practiced hill climbing on a vacant hillside near the Serbian church in Longstown. Fine home furnishings were available from the Wilson Furniture Company, and delivery would have been in one of these handsome vehicles. The Plodnik Furniture Company. 
we all remember the Christmas displays in their showroom windows. Servicing your automobile was never a problem in Aliquippa. Downtown, we had Bishton's Esso across from the State Theater, and on Sheffield Avenue in the 40s, Kowalix Texaco may have been your choice. Young's Sterling Station was also on Sheffield Avenue, but you would have visited there in the 20s. If your vehicle was in dire need of repair, you might have gone to Junax at the Stone Arch or Hallisey's Garage in West Aliquippa. If you were in the market for a new Chevrolet, you certainly would have made a stop at Miller & Sons in New Sheffield. Their service area was designed to keep your vehicle in fine running order. Entertainment was never a problem in Aliquippa. The State Theater was a landmark and featured top-run movies such as Snow White, which premiered in 1938. The artwork and banners for this classic Disney movie were created by Aliquippa artist Pete Dobish. If you were interested in fast-paced entertainment, you could always visit the Aliquippa Roller Rink. In need of a shave and a haircut, a visit to one of the local barber shops on Franklin Avenue was in order. Who could ever forget the weekly jewelry club drawing at Burger's Jewelry Store? It's a tradition that is still alive today. An essential business in every community was that of the undertaker, funeral parlor owner. Featured here is a very early funeral procession in West Aliquippa, led by the horse-drawn hearse of the F.A. Hornstein Funeral Home. Hornstein later offered ambulance service in this very elegant 1934 cord. James Derrick was another local undertaker and owned and operated Aliquippa's first motor hearse, a 1921 Rio. The Derrick Funeral Home was located on Franklin Avenue, across from the library. Beverages were never a problem in Aliquippa. This 1918 retail liquor license entitled the bearer to sell wine, malt, or brewed liquors. The Mutual Union Brewing Company had an annual production capacity of 100,000 gallons of beer. The brewery was located in West Aliquippa. If pop was your fancy, we had Yaki's Beverages to fill the bill. Remember orange, cherry, lemon lime, and cream soda? A familiar face several days a week was that of your milkman. Was the driver of this Logstown Milk Company truck your milkman? Another landmark business in Aliquippa was the P.M. Moore Company. For many years, they provided concrete and building supplies to the Aliquippa area. The C&L supermarket was a favorite shopping spot for most of us. After World War II, the store was located on Franklin Avenue until the Bersani brothers moved to a new, modern facility in Sheffield in the mid-1950s. Of course, there were a variety of small specialty shops to satisfy your grocery needs. Dominic LaLama's Groceries and Fruits in West. C. Fricano and Company Wholesale Fruit and Produce. Wagona's Fruit Market, which is the home of the Franklin Center today. The Slavic National Store Company in West. Probably the most recognizable business in Aliquippa was the Pittsburgh Mercantile Store. They provided a fleet of delivery trucks to serve the needs of their customers. Every community needed the services of a bank. This 1933 calendar advertising Aliquippa's oldest bank, the First National, was located at the corner of Main Avenue and Third Streets in West Aliquippa. As P.M. Moore was one of the founding fathers of the Woodlawn Trust Company, it is interesting to note here what appears to be the original stockholders of that bank listed on P.M. Moore letterhead in his handwriting. Ben's Shoe Store, owned and operated by Mr. and Mrs. Sussman, provided quality shoes for many years. After a matinee at the State, Strand, Temple, or the West Aliquippa Theater, you can enjoy refreshments at the Sugar Bowl with shops in both Woodlawn and Aliquippa. To this day, everyone who takes photographs or uses a camera in Aliquippa is called Simenteris. Mr. Simenteris became a local legend for his photographic skills. For watch repair, we had the House of Time. If golf was your sport of choice, there was the Aliquippa Country Club. Horseshoeing was a problem for this local blacksmith. And of course, where would we be without our party lines and your favorite Bell telephone operator? 
one of the businesses that was instrumental in building our community and is no longer